Now, today, we are living in an age which is quite peculiar. Because in the world of science, there are no longer any secrets. Because the method of science requires that all scientists be in communication with each other. And therefore, that every scientist, as soon as he has discovered something or uh, got a good idea, he rushes into print. And it's important for him to do so because some other scientist somewhere else in the world might be thinking about something on the same lines and would be stimulated in his work by this man's speculations, even if not uh, by discoveries. And so the whole scientific world tries to remain in communication. Uh, it was absolutely impossible to keep atomic energy a secret. In former ages, that might have been managed because there were many secrets once upon a time. And people were not admitted to these secrets unless they were in some way tested and found capable of handling them without running amok. We live in such a dangerous age because all the secrets are out in the open and anybody can run amok with them. And that's just the situation we have to face and that is just the situation we have to handle. It is too late to stop it because that would be, as they say, locking the door after the horse has bolted. The vice president of an extremely important corporation in the United States, very progressive and very uh, vital, a few months ago said, there are two major forces operating in the world today, for good or for evil. One is Red China, the other is LSD. <laughs> <laughs> and there is a certain reason why such a thing as a certain chemical, which is capable of opening people's minds in a certain way, should be something extremely disturbing. Because this particular chemical, in common with a number of others that have been known for centuries, but have been rather played cool through those centuries, is capable of doing something which simply cannot be tolerated. That is to say, capable of letting properly prepared individuals, or sometimes improperly prepared individuals, in on a secret which is very closely guarded and which is, as a matter of fact, the deepest and most fundamental of all our social taboos. I have just finished writing a book which I have had, uh, with a sort of tongue-in-cheek attitude, had the temerity to call The Book. And it is subtitled, The Book on the Taboo Against Knowing Who You Are because that is really the thing that cannot be let out. Ask yourself this, for what reason would a person be considered hopelessly insane? What uh, sort of claims must a person simply not make? Well, there is one, and that is if anybody claims that he is God. That simply isn't done, certainly not in our culture, although it's very frequent in India. But in our culture, that is simply not allowed because for most of us from a Christian background, and if not that, from a Jewish background, and there's a great deal in common, because both Christians and Jews are deeply concerned about somebody called Jesus Christ. Both Christians and Jews are in a way followers of Jesus Christ in different ways. He is a problem to both. <laughs> because he was the man who came out and discovered he was God. And uh, that simply is impermissible. The Jews handled it in one way. The Christians handled it quite as effectively in another way. The Christians handled Jesus perfectly, even more tactfully than the Jews. 
by putting him on a pedestal and saying this was the only man who ever was God and nobody else was really so before and certainly nobody can be so afterwards. Stop right there. <laughs> Put him on the altar, bow down to him, worship him, so that everything he had to say will be null and void. <laughs> and it worked beautifully. But you see, the trouble about deep secrets is they can't be repressed indefinitely. And we, human beings, have been systematically fooled by ourselves for quite a number of centuries into the notion that we are strangers in the universe. That the world that lies beyond the border of our skins is not ourselves and is some quite alien mechanical contraption into which we arrived and from which we will disappear and uh, we really have nothing very much to do with it it's something about which we can take an objective point of view we can look at it we can uh, measure it we can calculate it but it all turns out in the end to be some sort of stupid mechanism in which we are involved because as bodies we are part of it but it is common sense for most individuals that they themselves aren't even their bodies they are alienated spooks which have bodies like people have cars and uh, in which they go around and confront the external world now here's the problem, you see, that there are certain processes, some of which are what you might call spiritual exercises, others are simply chemicals, others are just horse sense, whereby one comes to see very clearly indeed that black goes with white and self goes with other. And as this becomes clear to you, it's rather shaking. Because, look, if what you define as you is inseparable from everything which you define as not you, just as front is inseparable from back, then you realize that deep down between self and other, there is some sort of conspiracy. If these things always occur in combination, and look very different from each other and feel quite different. Nevertheless, the feeling of difference between them allows each one to exist. 